come è scritto nel profeta Isaia. Ecco, io mando il mio messaggero davanti a te, egli ti preparerà la strada. Voce di uno che grida nel deserto, preparate la strada del Signore, raddrizzate i suoi sentieri. Si presentò Giovanni a battezzare nel deserto, predicando un battesimo di conversione per il perdono dei peccati. Accorreva lui tutta la regione della Giudea e tutti gli abitanti di Gerusalemme e si facevano battezzare da lui nel fiume Giordano, confessando i loro peccati. Giovanni era vestito di peli di cammello con una cintura di pelle attorno ai fianchi. Si cibava di locuste e mele selvatico e predicava. Dopo di me viene uno che è più forte di me e al quale io non sono degno di chinarmi per sciogliere i legacci dei suoi sandali. Io vi ho battezzati con acqua, ma egli vi battezzerà con lo Spirito Santo. Vangelo del Signore. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Christ, the one who is, and was, and is to come. Amen. All throughout the church today, in every place, the Gospel is read. Faithful people are being reminded of someone we are especially fond of here in Florence, John the Baptist, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, the cousin and forerunner of Jesus. John plays a key role in the Advent story, but he is also the patron saint of our city. And indeed, we have an image of him right out on the portico. I have noticed that living in Florence is a little bit like living with John as your neighbor. He pops up everywhere, sort of like that friend you get used to seeing in the shops and around every corner when you're out in the city. The baptistry is named for him, of course. But there's hardly a church in this city that doesn't have some statue or image or window of him somewhere. We grew up thinking of John as having an important supporting role in the drama that unfolds in the New Testament, but that is not quite fair. To someone in Jesus' own day, to any one of the hundreds or maybe thousands of people who came out to hear this man, John stood in the line of the great prophets of Israel. There was a buzz around John. People talked about him. They wondered about him. 
Some people wondered whether maybe he was a return of Elijah. Other people openly said that he was the long-waited-for Messiah. The scholars teach us that some of those groups endured into the second century, and there are still some, the tiny sect of the Mandeans, who still teach that John is the last and greatest prophet. But we all know what happened next. John does something that our attention-crazed culture could not imagine. At the very height of his influence, he tells people that he is not the person they're looking for. In fact, he tells them that the person they're looking for is someone else who is already among them. He just doesn't tell them who that is. That is the story we know. What we miss in that story is what those around John thought of him, that he was beyond any question, first and foremost, a prophet. The Gospel of Mark, our guide for the whole year ahead of us, opens with John bursting onto the scene. But it clearly casts John as a prophet, linking him right up front with the book of the prophet Isaiah. John is a man with a message. The people around him don't have the benefit of all the murals and the windows and the paintings and the statues. All they have is that message or what they've heard about it from others. And that, that message is what brings them out to the riverside, hoping for something more. Like all the prophets before him, John has a message that he is urgently trying to get people to hear. He wants people to know they have to stop living the way they have been living. Stop doing the things that they're doing. Because that is the only way you can get ready for what is coming. He is so intensely focused on getting people to hear what he has to say that he dresses strangely and he eats a crazy diet and he acts like someone on the very edge of civilized conduct. The word that summarizes John's urgent message is repent. In Greek, the word that we translate here as repentance is metanoia, which literally means turn around. Stop going in the direction you're headed. Turn around, back toward God. That is what preparation means for John. And that's why John is the prophet of Advent. He's calling on us to turn around, to turn toward the light that is growing in the distance and that will eventually be the star over the barn with the tiny baby in the food trough. Now, my friends, we need to confess something here. When we hear that word repent, what we really think is, that's the Bible telling all those people I disagree with how they ought to live their lives. We are all very well prepared to tell other people how they should repent. But that is not the message of the prophet. John is calling each one of us to repent, to turn around. John is calling each one of us to humility, to asking just what it is we are so sure of that is drawing a veil between us and God's transforming love. Prophets are not meant to be comfortable. Prophets are not meant to be polite company. If a prophet has a message that sits easily with you, you may be putting your trust in the wrong message and the wrong messenger. We are supposed to be disturbed 
by the prophets. We are supposed to question ourselves, to doubt our certainties. Remember that in the parable of the prodigal son, that moment at which that young wastrel who has spent all of his inheritance finally comes to his senses and sets himself back on the road toward his father. That is a repentance moment, a metanoia moment. But never forget that when he gets home, both that young boy and his older brother end up having to repent. Both of them have spent time lost, one lost in waywardness and the other lost in self-righteousness. Each one of us, friends, spends some time in this life being both of those brothers. Each one of us gets lost, lost to the devices and desires of our own hearts, lost to the certainty that we have righteousness on our side, each one of us needs to come to that moment of realization, of turning around. John is a messenger. He is sent to us no less than to the people who lived in his own day. We are lucky that we live in a city that claims him as a patron saint. For he is so easy to find. But he is not easy to hear. Most of the people who came out to be baptized in the Jordan went home thinking they were justified and nothing about their lives changed at all. God mercifully sends the prophets to help us see the need to change our lives. We've known prophets in our own day but we will only take profit from these prophets if we listen to them. We only benefit from the messenger if we consider and pray about the message and not imagine that it has come just to make others more like we think they should be. So for this week in Advent, let us make it our business to listen. To listen to the message of the prophets, the prophets in the Bible and the prophets of this day. The voices that challenge you, that unsettle you, that push you out of your comfort place. Those are the voices most likely to be speaking some part of God's truth in our hearing. And we will only find profit for ourselves in those words of prophecy if we just quiet ourselves and listen. Amen. And now we stand and affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of the seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the, for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name be, be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Let us give thanks for all our many blessings. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Let us especially pray for Rachel, Louise, Travis, Buck, Rose, Cordelia, Emilia, Charles, Jane, Divine, Loveline, Testimony, Praise, Jessica, Gilberto, Don Julie, Leonardo, Lydia, Alberto, Alison, Peggy, and Margarita. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We especially pray for those who have died. Beth, Albert, Mike, Joy, Anne, Tony, Pasquale, Cesare, Fiore, the Reverend M.A. Fondo, the Reverend Bob Tempoli, Giovanni, Rogers, Edwin, and Reuben. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, prayer. hear our prayer. We pray together. 
faithful and loving God. You trace our journeys and our resting places and our companion on the way. Sustain St. James Church with your grace. Bless us with joy, beauty, and wonder. Bind us together in fellowship and love. Let us be a refuge for the weary and a companion for the pilgrim. Give your anointing to Father Richard, that he may be a pastor who will care for your people, equip us for our ministries, and shine a light on your path. Grant that we may walk with you in the way of love and reflect your goodness and light always. This we pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and the hope of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace. Good to see you. Peace. When people start coming for work for communion, could you turn that toward the piano so that people can see Ricardo? Okay. Good morning. Peace. Peace. Please be seated. I'm not just the presider, I'm running the camera today. <laughs> so. Good morning. Welcome to St. James on this second Sunday of Advent. It is delightful to see you, and it's important to see you so spread out. But it does make the place look full, doesn't it? When we're, we're front to back, side to side, it's wonderful. I hope you have received this week a little e-newsletter bringing the tidings that we intend to be here on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day because of the regulations under which we're now required to work, we'll only have one service on Christmas Eve. It'll be at 6 p.m. But we will be here because it's Christmas Eve. So if you can come, if you're within Florence, you can come. Um, be mindful of what's careful for you. Don't feel obliged, but do feel invited. I hope you'll also take note of the little notice on the back of the leaflet today, inviting your offerings for Christmas decorations here in the church. And if you feel moved to remember someone or to offer a hope in order to adorn this sacred space, I hope you will do so. 
Somebody asked me as I was coming in, what is the news about Father Richard? And the news is he will arrive on the 23rd of December. Hallelujah. We also know, however, that we, we think he will be required to enter into a quarantine when he arrives, beginning the day after and extending for 10 days. So I'll know that he's below me because I'm in the townhouse above the rectory. I'll stomp on the floor to say hello, but we won't be able to see him until I think the 3rd of January. So keep him in your prayers. Keep his family in your prayers, that they arrive safely, that they pass a quiet time in quarantine, and prayerfully prepare for all of you, because that's what's waiting for them. And I am certainly waiting for him. <laughs> so, are there any other announcements to come before the body? I see the senior warden. Um, I know that I can speak loud enough, but for the sake of uh, those that are watching from a distance, that's why I'm using the mic. A reminder that we, have, uh, we are in the stewardship season where we want everybody to take part and contribute to the well-being of St. James Church. So when you are going out, remember to take the envelope and the yellow and fill them in and then bring them back next week and put them in the off tray, or just uh, give them to Edgardo, who is taking to the, to the office. That's very important. Also, today, 6th of December, is the last chance for all of you to take part in the convention-wide survey on becoming beloved community. We count on your contribution to know our identity so that we can become a community of love, not only in St. James, but Europe-wide. So we invite you to go back to the e-news, click to the link, go through it. If you are slow like me, it takes about 20 minutes. If you are fast, it's only 10 minutes, and it's done, and it's open. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Bishop. Thank you. Where is that link again? Where, where do we find the link? On the news. On the news. news. Okay. Yes. Please, please do this. Please do this because it's helping us learn about who we have become and who we are becoming in the convocation. We come now to the offering. Does anybody know what today, December 6th, is other than the second Sunday in Advent? Thank you. Raise your hand. Was that you, Monica? Thank you. Today is the Feast of St. Nicholas. Yeah, it really is. Who, among other things, was a bishop. So, I sort of like St. Nicholas. What do we know of about St. Nicholas? He went around doing what? Giving gifts. Here is your chance to be like St. Nicholas. It's time for the giving of gifts to support the life and vitality of the church. Maybe we don't pass the plates these days, but your offering is what makes this place tick. So be like St. Nicholas when you can, and give to assure the vitality of St. James. Oh, 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days, you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Dopo la cena prese il calice del vino, e dopo averti ringraziato lo dete loro e disse, Bevetene tutti, questo è il mio sangue della nuova alleanza, versato per voi e per molti in remissione dei peccati. Ogni volta cena e bevete fate questo in memoria di me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things to your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. James, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. In Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Dear friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Once again, we are a little short in the leaflet when it comes to the post-communion prayer. So, you're going to do it from memory. I know you are. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing, the mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and pray for in heaven and on earth, this day and always. Amen.